just chat a bit about losing a pet. There are those who maybe haven't experienced that and maybe certain personality types and maybe even people that have, like I grew up on a farm where we had lots of animals and an animal is an animal or whatever. But, the law, but grief is caused by the loss, significant loss of anything that you have put emotional attachment to. Pets qualify. Pets qualify. And so to help someone who's lost a pet, instead of, again, diminishing or putting, playing down their loss, their grief, remember, that's one of the things we cautioned against earlier. Instead of doing that, you actually give them permission to grieve. They've experienced a loss. You may not understand it because you're, you know, you've never been that attached to any kind of an animal at all before. Maybe it's partially because you've never been alone and that's your only friend. You've come, like me, grew up in a big family, lots of kids around, and uh, yeah, everybody likes the dog, but uh, if the dog's not around, we got each other and we're fine. But not everybody in the world's like that. And some put, have a pet, and that pet becomes, they become emotionally attached to that pet. So um, many, many times, the, one of the best things you can do for someone who's lost a pet is give them permission to grieve that loss, because it was an emotional attachment loss that took place. And even to the point, allow them to view that as the same as a, a family member. There was a Facebook um, challenge went around uh, a while back that I saw come through and, and the question was, should a, the, should a pet be treated as a member of the family? And hit agree or not agree, whatever. Well, the fact is, yes. It, because there is emotional attachment. Whether everybody agrees to that or has experienced that is immaterial. Uh, it's still an emotional attachment like a member of the family. So, some things that you might suggest if someone's experienced that would be to help them come up with some closure. Now, there's the, you know, the cute illustration of the hamster dying and dad's in the backyard with a five-year-old girl who just lost her hamster and they're having this burial service and everybody's standing around smiling but the fact remains that's the best thing that dad could do. Have closure. Now you may not have a burial necessarily but maybe even a little memorial service and it could be just you and the person who lost it maybe one or two of their friends whatever. Something for closure uh, for that pet uh, can be a help to them. Another one is maybe to establish some memories. Now, when I, when establishing memories doesn't have to be exotic, not necessarily putting together a film presentation, but maybe just some conversation. You know, how old was that do dog when you got him? Really? And what were some of the challenges you found training? The, how easy was it? And just talk about that, that pet uh, in conversation or even help them put together a scrapbook, something in memory or have a picture blown up and that they can keep of that pet, them and that pet together. Um, and of course, another one, and this is where some understanding of the grieving process comes in and you are now responsible, talk to that person about that pet, not just when it happens, but bring it up again in a few weeks, maybe even up to six months later. Let them talk through and analyze by conversation the loss of that pet. And you'll find it'll help people uh, grieve with that process in a tremendous way. All right.